Okay. Our problem is the following. Uh, we want to find the displacement field which we are going to denote as u, find u, and we expect it to be a function of position. We do not expect it to be a function of time for rather obvious reasons, right? And what are those reasons? Think about it for a couple of seconds. Well, you probably see it already, right? We're talking about steady state problems, right? So things are not a function of uh, time. They're only a function of position. Okay, so we want to find u as a function of x. And now I'm going to use, introduce some more mathematical notation that will be useful for us. We want to think of u, this function, as being a mapping, right, from a certain domain in one dimensional space, right? Uh, we're thinking of it as being a mapping from the open interval 0 comma L, okay, into uh, a certain uh, range, right? Now, the displacement field, because we're doing a problem in one dimension, is for our purposes just a scalar, okay? So, it's, so when we find the displacement field, we expect it to be nothing more than a real number, right? Apart from that, we really don't want to say anything more about it at this point. So I'm going to denote that as R, where R denotes real numbers, okay? Okay, um, also to prepare us for what comes later, I'm going to denote this as R1, although in one dimension, specifying that one is really superfluous because if, even if we wrote just R, we would know that it was a one dimensional space, okay? Uh, so the way you would read this is that u is a mapping from the from the domain zero comma l, and it's an open interval, uh, onto uh, the one dimensional space of real numbers. Okay. It's important to note that we are talking of an open interval here, not a closed interval. The reason for this will become clear as, as, as we develop it. I, I'll, I'll come back to this and to say why it is that we said it's an open interval. Okay, so we want to find u of this type um, given, okay, given u at x equals 0 equals u0, okay? We're also given ug, right? The, the quantity that I talked about on the previous slide where I talked about when, when I mentioned that we may have the displacement specified at the right end. Or t, okay? So we know u naught, we know either ug or t, okay? We are also given f this distributed body force as a function of position, okay? Uh, in addition, we are going to say that um, we have what is called a constitutive relation, okay? So we also have the constitutive relation, okay, which we are going to write now as sigma equals E times U comma X, okay? So we're given all these quantities and, and this, this last constitutive relation, okay? And we want to find U such that the following holds. The derivative of sigma with respect to x plus f equals 0, okay, in the open interval 0 comma L, okay? So this, of course, is our differential equation. Right, so this is our differential equation. Okay. 
okay. Um, but this is not all. We need to specify other uh, details about, about our problem, okay. And in particular, in this case, we need to specify also the boundary conditions. So, we want this differential equation to be satisfied with boundary conditions u at 0, that's u at x equals 0, is equal to u naught, right? And really here we're just recalling what we already wrote uh, in uh, further up in the problem definition, okay? So we have this condition and either u at x equals l equals u given or sigma evaluated at l equals t, okay? Where, what do we mean by sigma? Well, we mean for, in order to get sigma, we go back to our constitutive relation, which we have back here, and evaluate it at x equals L, okay? Right? Um, so, so these are the boundary conditions. And, and it's important to note that for the way we've set up the problem, uh, this boundary condition at x equals zero always holds. However, at x equals L, we have either this condition or that one, okay? So let me say just one or two more th uh, things about these boundary conditions. So uh, of the boundary conditions, u at x equals 0 equals u 0. And if we have the displacement boundary condition at x equals L, these together constitute what we call Dirichlet boundary conditions. Okay. Thirishly boundary conditions uh, are uh, boundary conditions which are applied to the primal field that we are solving for in a partial differential equation. Okay. So let me state that as well. Uh, these are boundary conditions. On. primal field, okay? And by primal, we simply mean sort of, you know, the primary field, right? What is the, what is the field in terms of which we are posing the problem? Well, we are posing the problem in terms of our displacement field U. When we apply boundary conditions on that field, we call them typically Dirichlet boundary conditions. And this terminology is quite uniform throughout mathematics, right? Thru, throughout uh, the field of partial differential equations. Okay. There is another type of boundary condition, uh, which is uh, the following, right? In this case, we have uh, sigma at x equals L is equal to T. This is what we call a Neumann boundary condition. Right now, if you look at where, what we've written out for sigma, in this particular case, we have using our constitutive relation for 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 sigma, we have e u comma x. The whole thing evaluated at x equals l 
equals t, right? Just from our constitutive relations, right? So this thing would follow from So we have this from our constitutive relation and typically in a fairly vast range of problems, whenever you have a boundary condition that is applied to a derivative, a spatial derivative of your primal field, it tends to get called a Neumann boundary condition. That's not uniformly true. For certain higher order problems, the situation gets a little more complex, which we won't get into um, in this series of lectures at least, okay? Uh, alternately, in the context of the, of the displacement problem, the, the, the Dirichlet boundary condition is often also called the, the displacement boundary condition for obvious reasons, whereas the Neumann boundary condition often gets called the traction boundary condition, okay? So let me just state that for elasticity. The Dirichlet boundary condition is called the displacement boundary condition. Okay. And the Neumann boundary condition, for obvious reasons, is called the traction boundary condition. Okay, at this point, let's stop here for this segment. We will pick it up when we come back.